Almost six decades after man landed on the moon, NASA has turned its attention back towards lunar exploration with the launch of the Artemis mission. Considered one of the most powerful rockets in the world, Artemis 1 will help establish a permanent base on the moon. Let's take a closer look. NASA's Artemis program is an effort to place astronauts on the lunar surface and develop an ongoing presence there. Artemis 1 launched on November 16, 2022, after having missed its previous launch windows. The program's name is derived from Artemis, the Greek goddess of the moon and twin sister to Apollo, whose namesake program first brought astronauts to our natural satellite on July 20, 1969. The Artemis program is a renaming of several earlier activities NASA was already undertaking to return humans to the moon. These were mandated by President Trump's Space Policy Directive 1, which tasked the agency with focusing on missions to the moon. In 2019, Vice President Mike Pence set an ambitious deadline to land humans at the lunar south pole by 2024. Perhaps the most ambitious of the Artemis mission's objectives involves using the moon as a stepping stone for a mission to Mars. Robots have done all the detective work on Mars so far, but NASA now aims to send astronauts there by the 2030s. With the future target set on the Red Planet, the return to the moon will be used to provide us with the knowledge and tools to better navigate our solar system. Between 1969 and 1972, six missions took place in which 12 people walked on the surface of the moon, all of them men. For such a high-risk mission, the most experienced astronauts were required, and at the time, there were no women at NASA who had suitable test flight experience. For a long time, space was viewed as an industry primarily for men, and it wasn't until 1978 that NASA selected its first female astronauts. As of March 2022, 75 women have been to space, and the Artemis moon landing will serve as a reminder of changing times. While it's currently undecided who will be chosen, it will likely be one of NASA's astronauts who has already worked aboard the ISS. In December 2020, NASA announced the Artemis team of astronauts, which included nine men and women. In August 2022, Chief Astronaut Reed Wiseman announced that all active NASA astronauts are eligible for Artemis missions, with crew selections to be determined at a later date. At the center of the Artemis program are NASA's new mega-rocket, the Space Launch System, and the Orion spacecraft. The SLS is a 322-foot-tall rocket consisting of a core stage, upper stage, and twin five-segment solid rocket boosters to launch a payload into space. For crewed Artemis missions, the rocket will launch the Orion spacecraft to the moon. Orion is a space capsule larger than the Apollo command modules that are designed to carry four astronauts on missions to the lunar surface. The 42-day Artemis 1 mission will test the Orion spacecraft, a capsule that will orbit the moon and one day carry human crew members there. On Artemis 1's launch day, powered by two solid rocket boosters and four mighty engines, the SLS thundered into the skies, dropped its empty propellant tanks into the ocean, and then separated from Orion. The capsule used a smaller, European-built propulsion system to set itself on course to fly past the moon. Though Artemis 1 didn't launch with any crew, Orion is not empty. Stowed aboard the capsule is a suite of experiments designed to help keep astronauts safe on future Artemis flights, a major focus being exposure to deep space radiation. A total of 10 CubeSats are hitching a ride aboard Artemis 1, with three focused on radiation. These include a space weather station for measuring particles and magnetic fields, an imaging device to be deployed at the Earth-Moon Lagrange Point 2 to measure radiation in Earth's plasmasphere, and a study of single-celled yeast to observe the effects of deep space radiation on living organisms. Other CubeSats will conduct studies of the lunar surface using infrared cameras to search for water, as well as near-surface hydrogen in the permanently shadowed regions around the lunar south pole. One CubeSat, dubbed Nia Scout, will deploy in the cis lunar orbit and spend two years utilizing solar sail technology to intercept and capture images of 2020 GE, an asteroid less than 60 feet wide. Strapped into Orion's commander chair is a mannequin called Commander Munikin Campos, 
named for Arturo Campos, the electrical power subsystem manager for the Apollo 13 lunar module, who helped bring that troubled mission safely back to Earth. Munikin Campos is equipped with two internal radiation sensors, with additional sensors embedded in the mannequin seat to measure vibration and acceleration forces during the mission. The Munikin is also wearing NASA's new Orion Crew Survival System suit. The orange flight suit resembles similar suits used during space shuttle missions, but features a plethora of upgrades. Orion's flight suit is designed to be worn for up to six days, and it features a feeding tube access port on the helmet so astronauts don't have to depressurize their suits to eat. The suit's familiar orange color allows rescue teams to more easily spot astronauts in the event of an in-flight emergency. The suit launched on Artemis 1 fits the Munikin perfectly, and once assembly begins on suits for real astronauts, each will be custom-built for the wearer, as opposed to the comparable one-size-fits-most suits from the shuttle era. Two other torso-only mannequins also accompany Munikin Campos to aid in onboard radiation studies. Referred to as phantoms, each is constructed from materials that mimic human bone and tissue, as well as organs unique to adult females, such as breast tissue and ovaries, which are susceptible to radiation damage. The phantoms have their own names, Helga and Zohar, and each is equipped with over 6,000 passive radiation detectors and 34 active radiation detectors. The pair will serve as part of the Matroshka Astrorad Radiation Experiment, an international research partnership between the German Aerospace Center, the Israel Space Agency, and NASA. Zohar is wearing an Astrorad vest, which is designed to allow astronauts to leave shelter areas of Orion and other spacecraft during solar radiation events while maintaining their protection. Helga is not wearing the Astro Red Vest, and researchers plan to compare exposure rate differences between Helga and Zohar upon Orion's return. The Orion spacecraft itself is also equipped with several radiation detectors. The Radiation Area Monitor consists of six passive sensors to record total radiation exposure through the end of the mission. And the European Space Agency has placed five active dosimeters throughout the vessel to monitor radiation levels in real time. A critical part of Orion's radiation exposure prevention systems includes the Hybrid Electronic Radiation Assessor. HERA is designed to serve as part of Orion's caution and warning system, which can alert astronauts to incoming solar particle events, allowing crews to preemptively seek shelter. Radiation in deep space doesn't just affect humans. Biology Experiments 1, which is also stowed aboard Orion, houses four investigations to study the effects of radiation on plants and fungi. The experiment will focus on changes in the nutritional value of seeds, how fungi repair their DNA, yeast adaptability, and algal gene expression. Researchers hope observing these different biological systems will lead to further innovations in the ability of humans to survive long-term on the Moon and Mars. Space exploration leads to new scientific discoveries, significant economic benefits, and inspiration for people to reach farther and higher. It is not just financial expenditure with no return. It earns back in spades and sometimes in ways we can't predict. The invention of cordless tools and Velcro are often associated with NASA and space exploration. In reality, those were invented before the Apollo program. Although those weren't invented because of space exploration, there are plenty of things that have been, from memory foam to suits for race car drivers to cancer-sniffing instruments. A landing on the moon also provided a unique view of Earth that showed our big blue marble in space. We, the humans of this planet, need to go back to the moon for many reasons, but the most important one is the challenge. To extend ourselves to innovate and progress. The effort put into this will lead to new ways to look at and solve problems not only for living and working in space, but for improving how we live and work on Earth. Once in the atmosphere, Orion began to soar through space powered by the interim cryogenic propulsion stage, a 45-foot-long cylindrical system with one engine. As Orion flies toward the moon, a service module provided by the European Space Agency will course correct as needed. The spacecraft will complete up to one and a half revolutions in lunar orbit, where it will set a record for the farthest any spacecraft that can carry a crew has traveled. Then it'll fire its engines at just the right time to be propelled back toward Earth with the aid of the moon's gravity. Later, the Orion spacecraft will make a roaring return to our atmosphere, 
It'll be moving at 6.8 miles per second, the fastest re-entry of any capsule built for humans. The craft in its heat shield will have to enter temperatures of 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit, a crucial part of this test mission since NASA can't artificially create these conditions on the ground. If it survives, Orion will splash down in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of San Diego within view of a U.S. Navy ship that will recover the spacecraft. Artemis II is scheduled for launch in 2024 and is expected to carry the first four astronauts. The Orion capsule will take the crew farther from Earth than humans have ever traveled before. The crew will complete a lunar flyby and return to Earth, evaluating the spacecraft systems while carrying humans. Artemis II will demonstrate critical functions including mission planning, system performance, crew interfaces, and navigation and guidance beyond low Earth orbit. After launching, SLS will orbit the Earth twice, firing its engines to build up the speed to push it to the moon. The entire mission will last approximately 21 days. Artemis III is the second crewed mission of the program and the first to land astronauts on the moon. The crew will visit the moon's south pole to search for water, study its surface, test technologies, and learn to work on a world outside Earth. This will see the next man and first woman step onto the lunar surface. Providing previous missions have been successful, the astronauts will shoot towards the moon using the lunar lander to lower two people to the moon's south polar region. They will remain on the moon for around a week. If you like this video, you may also like this one, which talks about a terrifying new signal the Voyager has sent back to Earth. Do you think NASA should set up a permanent base on the moon? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below.